When we think about the forces that shape history, we often picture kings and generals, wars and inventions, or revolutions that shook entire nations. But just as often, history has been shaped by something much smaller, so small, it can't even be seen with the naked eye. Diseases have toppled empires, redrawn borders, rewritten economies, and even reshaped how we think about life and death. They didn't just change the people they infected, they changed the trajectory of humanity itself. The first example takes us back to classical Greece during a time when Athens was at the height of its glory. It was 430 BCE, and the city was locked in a brutal conflict with Sparta known as the Peloponnesian War. Inside Athens' walls, citizens believed they were safe supplied with food and protected from Spartan armies outside. But safety turned out to be an illusion. A mysterious disease swept through the crowded city, killing tens of thousands. No one knows for certain what it was. Historians have debated everything from typhus to smallpox to Ebola-like fevers, but the symptoms described by the historian and Thucydides paint a grim picture. Sudden fevers, unquenchable thirst, red eyes, ulcers, diarrhea, and death within a week for many victims. It wasn't just the disease itself that was brutal, it was the setting. Imagine stuffing an entire population into one giant college dorm without running water or hand sanitizer. With that kind of overcrowding, the plague spread like wildfire. Pericles Athens' great statesman died from the disease. The city that had been a beacon of democracy, philosophy, and art found itself paralyzed. Morality broke down. Families abandoned their sick. Traditional funeral rites collapsed under the sheer scale of death, and strategically, the plague weakened Athens so badly that it never recovered its dominance. Sparta eventually emerged victorious in the war, and the golden age of Athens dimmed. One outbreak of disease had altered the course of Western civilization, showing that even the strongest armies and the greatest minds are helpless if an invisible enemy slips past the gates. Fast forward nearly 2,000 years, and Europe was once again brought to its knees by a disease that dwarfed even the horrors of Athens. In the mid-14th century, a plague arrived from Asia via trade routes and ports carried silently by fleas on rats. It became known as the Black Death. Between 1347 and 1351, it tore through Europe with terrifying speed, killing an estimated one-third to one-half of the population. Entire villages vanished. Priests, doctors, and nobles died alongside peasants. Streets were filled with funeral carts, bells tolled endlessly, and mass graves swallowed communities whole. The symptoms were unmistakable swollen lymph nodes, blackened skin from internal bleeding fevers that escalated quickly. Most who caught it died within days. For Europeans, it must have felt like the end of the world. Villages emptied so quickly, it was like the medieval version of a ghost town, except instead of tumbleweeds rolling through, there were rats carrying fleas. Yet even amid this devastation, the Black Death reshaped society in lasting ways. With so many dead labor became scarce, peasants suddenly had bargaining power. The rigid structure of feudalism cracked opening space for new economic systems. Some historians argue that the Renaissance, with its burst of creativity and new social mobility, was born partly from the disruption caused by the plague. Culturally, the Black Death also altered how people thought about faith and mortality. The church lost prestige when prayers failed to stop the dying. Art became obsessed with themes of death and the fragility of life, grim reapers, skeleton dances, and haunting depictions of hell. Yet the trauma also fostered resilience. Europe rebuilt itself and, in the ashes of the plague, grew new ideas, economies, and cultural movements that shaped the modern world. The Black Death was one of the darkest chapters in human history, but it also marked a turning point proving that catastrophe could spark transformation. The third disease on our journey is one that haunted humanity for centuries smallpox. Unlike the sudden eruption of the Athenian plague or the sweeping devastation of the Black Death, smallpox was a slow-burning terror that stalked generation after generation. Caused by the variola virus, it produced fevers, vomiting, and a signature rash that turned into pus-filled sores. Survivors were often left scarred or blinded. Many did not survive at all. For centuries, smallpox killed millions across Europe, Asia, Africa, and eventually the Americas. But its great greatest historical impact came after 1492, when European explorers carried smallpox across the Atlantic. Indigenous populations in the Americas had no immunity, and the virus ripped through them with catastrophic speed. Whole civilizations crumbled. The Aztec and Inca empires with their cities, armies, and cultures were devastated before European conquistadors ever fought major battles. In some regions, up to 90% of the native population perished within decades. It was less a conquest than a biological collapse. Smallpox, more than swords or guns, allowed Europe to dominate the new world. The consequences reshaped the globe. With indigenous societies shattered, Europe colonized vast territories reshaping the demographics, economies, and cultures of two continents. African slavery expanded to replace the labor force that disease had destroyed. The balance of global power tilted sharply toward Europe, launching centuries of empire and exploitation. Smallpox literally redrew the map of the world. And yet, unlike the Plague of Athens or the Black Death, smallpox eventually became the first disease humanity managed to eradicate. In the 18th century, an 
inoculation methods were pioneered, and in 1796, Edward Jenner discovered vaccination using cowpox. Over time, vaccination campaigns spread, and by the late 20th century, the World Health Organization launched a global effort to wipe the disease out entirely. In 1980, smallpox was officially declared eradicated the first and so far only human disease to be eliminated worldwide. From terror and empire to hope and triumph, smallpox tells the full arc of how disease has shaped humanity from catastrophe to control. By the dawn of the 20th century, humanity had already endured centuries of epidemics, but nothing could prepare the world oh for what God, arrived in 1918. As World War I was drawing to a close, a new influenza virus began spreading among soldiers and civilians alike. At first, it seemed like ordinary flu, then the death toll exploded. This was the Spanish flu, and within little more than a year it killed between 50 and 100 million people more than the war itself. What made the Spanish flu so terrifying wasn't only the sheer number of deaths, but who it killed. Typical influenza is most dangerous to the very young and the very old, but in 1918 the virus hit healthy young adults especially hard. Soldiers returning from the trenches carried it across oceans. Cities tried quarantines, masks, and public closures, but the virus moved faster than governments could respond. Entire families were wiped out. Coffins ran short. Newspapers struggled to describe the scale. In American cities, life was turned upside down. Picture high school football games canceled church services banned and restaurants ordered shutdown. Even funerals were sometimes illegal. For a culture that valued community gatherings, it was as if the heart of daily life had been ripped out. The Spanish flu changed the way governments thought about public health. It demonstrated that disease could move as quickly as armies and that modern societies were far more interconnected than they had realized. It also left psychological scars. Survivors spoke of neighbors who vanished overnight of schools and factories emptied of societies shaken to their core. The pandemic taught humanity that even in an industrial age, microbes could wield more power than machines of war. Decades later, another epidemic would challenge not only medicine, but culture itself. In the early 1980s, doctors in Los Angeles and New York began reporting unusual illnesses among young men. Rare cancers, pneumonias, infections that healthy people weren't supposed to get. Soon the cause was identified a new virus attacking the immune system. It became known as H. HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. At first, AIDS was surrounded by fear, stigma, and misinformation. Entire communities, especially gay men, were devastated. Families grieved in silence, governments responded slowly, and discrimination deepened the crisis. In some places, patients were shunned by hospitals, but alongside the tragedy came activism. Grassroots organizations demanded faster research, cheaper drugs, and recognition of human dignity. By the 1990s, antiretroviral therapies began to transform HIV from a death sentence into a chronic condition. Though millions still live with HIV today, the epidemic changed medicine by accelerating drug development, reshaping public health, and sparking global cooperation. Culturally, HIV AIDS also forced conversations about sexuality, identity, and inequality. The final disease on this journey is one still fresh in memory COVID-19. In late 2019, reports emerged from Wuhan, China of a mysterious pneumonia. Within months, the coronavirus had spread worldwide, shutting down cities, collapsing economies, and upending daily life for billions. For the first time in history, humanity experienced a truly global lockdown. Schools, restaurants, and airports closed, streets fell silent, masks and hand sanitizer became everyday essentials. COVID-19 has killed millions and continues to affect millions more. But its significance lies not only in the death toll, but in its global disruption. On one hand, scientists sequenced the virus's genome within weeks, and vaccines were developed at unprecedented speed. On the other, inequality and distribution left poorer nations waiting while wealthier countries raced ahead. Conspiracy theories spread alongside the virus, showing how information true and false travels as fast as pathogens. In the U.S., it also produced some surreal cultural moments. Toilet paper became a form of currency, grocery store shelves were stripped bare, and Zoom calls turned kitchen tables into boardrooms. For all the hardship, people will long remember the odd mix of fear and absurdity. The pandemic forced societies to confront fundamental questions. Every disease that truly changed humanity forever has been more than a medical event. It has been a turning point in the story of civilization, and perhaps that is the sober takeaway history isn't only written by generals or politicians, it is also written by microbes, by invisible forces that remind us that our place in the world is always more precarious than we like to believe. Yet in that precariousness lies possibility. Each epidemic has also shown humanity's capacity to adapt, to discover, to endure, and to rebuild.